Yeah, man, it's the hidden signs of black hair yet again, you know. And you know what happens when it comes to the hidden signs of black hair. You're gonna get a whole leap of powerful, powerful information on nutrition. Powerful, powerful information on products for your hair. And even powerful information on the black hair care industry in the UK. And you know what happens, you know. The people that come with their families, the people that come with their children, and the goddesses, the queens, the empresses are out in full effect. It's a beautiful occasion right here, kings and queens. Come inside with Shakara and see Wagwan. Peace. Okay, so family, we're going to be welcoming our next guest to the stage. Now, our next guest, our next speaker, is going to be talking to us on the science of hair loss. And her, the slogan of her business, she's another founder. You may have noticed that the vast majority of our speakers are black-owned female business owners. That needs a round of applause in and of itself. On Black Pound Day, we have yet another speaker who is a black female business owner. And her business was inspired and named after her daughter, Nyla, when she realized that her daughter had some health challenges that meant that the regular high street brands were not suitable for her daughter's hair. So just like any good mother, she went out on a quest to find a brand that would work for her daughter. And when she couldn't find it, guess what she did, family? She made it herself. That's right. So now she is an award, another award-winning hair care brand owner. Her hair care brand is called Nyla's Natural. And some of you may have seen her on a popular BBC program. Do, does anyone know where she was on? Dragon's Den, everyone. We have a celebrity at the place. Please warmly welcome Camille Davies. Um, hey, good afternoon, family. How are you? How's your day been? Good. Thank you for that very warm welcome. Um, yeah, that's, that's heartwarming. Thank you. So my daughter, who is here, who is as, nearly as tall as I am, but that's not very hard. She's taller in it. Yeah, she's 10. It's not hard, to be fair, because I'm like five foot nothing. But she, um, she's very much the inspiration behind the brand. Um, she's, yeah, she's a treasure and she wanted to say something to you guys today, so, hey, uh, after, after, so after she's going to come and say something, okay, these modern kids going to die. Okay, so, I'm, a lot of you know the reason why I started the brand, obviously, it was inspired by my daughter who had eczema and I was really looking for something that wouldn't aggravate her skin condition, but was also powerful enough to care for her hair, which was Afro textured hair, your kinkier type of hair as well. She has high porosity hair, which means it dries quickly. And whilst I um, found it relatively easy to find something that would not irritate her skin, I found it very difficult finding a product that combined my two needs, and that's why I created the brand. What a lot of people don't know, actually, is my hair loss story. And in 2012, so two years after having my daughter, my hair started falling out in clumps, and I was devastated. I was losing the hair that I had finally learned to love to alopecia, something called CCCA. And that sent me on a quest to understand the science of hair loss, what is happening, why am I losing my hair, and also what products are available on the market to help me halt the hair loss product and start the process of regrowing my hair. What I found was, whilst there are a lot of topical applications or topical products on the market, a lot of them are based on antidotal information so there's no science or no evidence to substantiate the claims and then I also found that the products that were based on scientific information had been formulated to meet the needs of your straighter hair types and didn't again take into the consideration the needs of afro textured hair so what is my mission my mission is to create high performance non-toxic products right that care for your hair and your skin um, I am really passionate about putting black beauty in all of its forms 
on, in front of industry, at the forefront of industry, because I believe that we need to be present in the forefront of industry, and for too long, our beauty and our hair care needs have been sidelined. Um, <laughs> I use innovative products, so in addition to finding products that are plant-based, I am also really interested in knowing what are the modern advancements in ingredient technology and how can I incorporate those modern advancements in my formulations. Um, and again, and the final thing is to provide education to people of black descent on how to care for their hair. Um, I don't know about you, but a lot of us are a victim of YouTube, and we're a victim of Google, and you have people telling you all kinds of things, and there's so much misinformation out there. You see people telling you to use baking soda, some people telling you to use soap on your head, some people telling you castor oil will grow your hair, and a lot of it, unfortunately, is a lot of misguided information. So I'm passionate about making sure that you get the information that's backed by science, and that's delivered to you in a way that's easily accessible. So, hair loss. Before we can talk about hair loss and understand it, it's really important that we understand the hair growth cycle and how that works. So we'll be talking about the hair growth cycle today. We'll be talking about hair loss and its various forms so that we can recognize and treat that if that's something that we are experiencing. And we'll be looking at some of the common aggressions. So what are the things that are causing hair loss? Is your hair loss a symptom of something or is your hair loss a primary condition? Um, so that includes stress-induced hair loss, nutrition and hair loss, styling and hair loss, and genetics and hair loss, stroke hair growth. Um, and then we'll be looking at what the solution and the remedies are for that. So we're going to start with the growth cycle. So before I do, does anybody understand the hair growth cycle? Yeah? So some of you guys do. Show of hands for those who don't. Awesome. Show of hands for those who do. Wicked. Right, so I'm going to start over here. You have several stages of hair growth. Now, when the hair starts to grow, it forms a bud called the derma papilla, and that bud starts to protrude from the scalp, and the hair starts to grow. This is called the anagen phase of the hair growth cycle. It gets a rich supply of nutrients, which will nourish the follicle, and that will inspire the hair to growth. Now, the anagen cycle of the hair growth stage lasts between, I'm trying to pause it, but it won't pause, lasts between two and seven years. Now, science has shown that for black women, or people of black descent, our anagen phase is typically between two and four years, right? Where people of Asian descent, their anagen phase is around seven years. So that's why typically women who are Asian can grow their hair right down here, where you'll find black women, we have our hair growth to around here. And that's typically because the hair growth stays in the hair growth cycle for about two to four years. And whilst it's in that hair growth cycle, we're getting about four inches of hair growth per year, okay? So then what will happen is the hair moves into the second phase of the hair growth cycle, which is the resting phase. So after it's expired, it's genetically predetermined hair growth stage, it will go into the resting phase. Now, what's really important to note is that, oh God, this thing's really messing me about. What's really important to note is that the anagen phase of the hair growth cycle starts to reduce as you age. So you'll find that as you get older, you might start experiencing um, less density than you had when you was younger. So a lot of us will typically say, why when I was young, I had such a full body of hair. It was so long, it was down here, it was thick, it would break combs. But as I've gotten older, <laughs> my mom would chop me, all kind of things, right? But as I've gotten older, I've found that my hair isn't as thick as it used to be. Now, the reason that is happening is the anagen phase starts to reduce as you get older. 
And that's because as women, as we get older, our estrogen levels begin to decline and our testosterone levels begin to increase. Your anagen is very much influenced by your estrogen levels. So as that starts to naturally decline, so does the, re the rate in which your hair grows and so does the length in which it stays in the anagen phase. Now that something's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. might just skip the video if it doesn't cooperate. So then after, after the anagen phase, which is fed by the nutrients in the diet that you, you eat, the hair enters into the next phase, which is called the catagen phase. Now in this phase, the hair is resting. It's not growing. It's just resting. And that phase typically lasts for about two to three weeks, so it's very short. And what you'll find is that a hormone called DHT goes to the follicle, and DHT tells the follicle to release that shed of hair, which has met its full hair growth term, to be released from the scalp, and then it goes into the telogen phase. That phase typically lasts for three months. Then you will find a new hair bud forms, it pushes the old hair out, and you will start the hair growth process again. Now, a couple of facts to note about the hair growth cycle is 90% in a healthy person who isn't suffering with any form of hair loss 90% of the hairs on the scalp will be in the anagen phase and 10% of the hairs on the scalp will be in the other two phases that I've just mentioned. We typically lose about 50 to 100 hairs a day. So that's when you find you're combing your hair and you're losing hair, that's normal. But if you're finding that you're losing bunches of hair or you're finding that when you look at the end of the hair, it's not the terminal length of your hair or you've got a bud on it, then, or you haven't got a bud on it, sorry, then the hair's broken or it's entered into follicular miniaturization, which means that's a sign of hair loss. Is everyone with me? Any questions? No? All right. Awesome. So basically, this is the cycle in which your hair grows. Now, there are various types of hair loss. There's primary, which is just the hair loss. There's no underlying cause for it. You're experiencing alopecia. And then there's secondary, where there's an underlying cause, such as fungus, cysts, burn, rash, traction, or stress. Does anybody know why stress affects the hair growth cycle? Hormones, yes, but why particularly? What hormones? Yeah, it causes inflammation to the scalp. I mean, stress affects our body in very different ways, but when we're really, really stressed, we um, release um, adrenaline and we release cortisol, and those things also encourage DHT to be released in the body, and again, that DHT causes the follicle to be released from the scalp. Now, what you'll find is when you've experienced hair or when you're experiencing some type of trauma, whether it be stress, whether it be an operation, etc., you will find that three months after the event, which is the telogen phase, that's when you'll start to see the hair fall. So more often, once that you've started to experience hair fall, some of us don't realize that it's linked to stress because the stress is gone, right? The stress is gone, you're all right, you're cool, you're happy, you've gone through whatever it is, but now you're starting to experience the hair fall. So that's one of the reasons for that. Now you've got types of alopecia, which is scarring and non-scarring alopecia. Does anybody know the difference? Right. So scarring alopecia, what's happening is that you've got an inflammation of the hair follicle, 
And this whole thing here, this whole thing gets damaged and scarred. And now once that's built up um, hard skin and there's no follicular in that, the, it's damaged, it's not going to grow back. And I don't care what kind of snake oil, what kind of castor oil, what kind of herbs, whoever's pushing shea butter, how many times I tell you to rub your head, it's not going to grow back, all right? And this is something that really irritates me um, because I see a lot of people taking advantage of women who are going through hair loss to sell their products. But... And, and we're so desperate for our hair to grow that we buy into it and we end up disappointed. And this is why I want to arm you with this knowledge because if you have scarring alopecia, it's something that you're going to have to come to terms with. Your hair's not going to grow back. All right? Now, how you will recognize whether or not you have scarring alopecia is the hair in that particular region or the skin will be very smooth and you won't have any of the little villi hairs, the very, very fine hairs. You won't have any of those in that patch, okay? And that's how you can start to see that you've got scar in there. But the best way to diagnose that is to go to a dermatologist or go to a dracologist. And as soon as you start to notice any patches, I recommend you go to a dermatologist or a trichologist because they can halt it and stop it from progressing to the scarring phase. There isn't a sheer butter in the world or a castor oil in the world that's going to stop that from doing that. You have to go and see a professional, okay? Now, with non-scarring alopecia, what's happened is that the follicles have entered into a dormant phase. You've got follicular miniaturization. What you're ha what's happening is that the stem cells are not regenerating and you just need to boost and kick that process and find out what exactly is going on. Eliminate the cause and then you'll find the hair will begin to start to grow back. So, scarring alopecia is central centerial fungal alopecia. Now, this is the one that I had. Remember I said I had CCA? Now that's typically categorized by a bold spot that starts to form in the middle of your hair and it grows outwards. You will start to experience itching, sensitivity in that area and a lot of irritation and that's a sign that you've got that type of alopecia. It's typically something that affects black women and they used to call it hot comb alopecia. And the reason they, why they called it hot comb alopecia is they thought when we were using the hot combs and the oil was burning up our head, that oil was causing the scarring, so they called it hot comb alopecia. Now they realize that actually it's not caused by that, but they still don't understand the reason why typically black women are suffering with this specific type of alopecia. If you catch it early and you start to introduce the right hair care practices and the right products, you can halt and reverse it from progressing and scarring and you can start to have your hair regrow. Um, and then there's the other one, which is frontal fibrosing. Has anybody heard of that one? Right. That type of alopecia typically starts from the hairline and it works its way backwards. So a lot of times people will think it's traction alopecia, but it's not. And you can typically see if it's this type of alopecia because your eyebrows start to thin as well. And when I'm looking for this type of alopecia, I often look at someone's eyebrows to see how diffuse that is. And then you can see the, the um, pattern of it growing and going backwards like that. Non-scarring types of alopecia are telogen effluvium. That's where you get diffused shedding around the hair. Um, that can be caused by stress, that can be caused by hormones, that can be caused by pregnancy, um, poor diet, lack of iron, lack of vitamin D. All of those things can lead to that type of shedding. Then you've got the androgenic alopecia. Does anybody know what that type of alopecia is? Anybody? So that's your male patterned or female patterned boldness. So with men, the pattern starts here. You know, and they start getting the M in the hairline. <laughs> 
So that will start here and work its way back to the bold spot. And for women, the pattern typically is in the front bit, top bit here, and they will start to see the thinning, and then it will work its way back into a bold patch. That alopecia is caused by the elevation of testosterone in the bloodstream. So if you find something that can combat and block the DHT receptors, you can halt and reverse that type of alopecia. Um, and then you've got traction alopecia, and we all know about that, right? So yeah, too tight braids, too tight hairs in a bun, they're constantly styling in the same way. Um, when you get your hair plaited by anybody, make sure that they are not plaiting from here. I don't care how much you want them edges laid, it's best to have bushy edges and them not be laid and then have no edges at all, right? So tell them to leave it, to leave it, see mine, out, out and proud, leave them, right? Because once, once that starts to progress, um, though you can, again, you can grow it back because it's not the scar in alopecia, it will take you some time. So again, prevention is better than cure with that type of alopecia. So this is the CCA in black women. Um, as I've mentioned before, you really want to try and catch it while it's in this stage. And what you might notice as well is you have very, in that area, the hair is very short. So it might not be completely bold, but you might find that the hair for some reason is not growing to the full length of the rest of your hair. And that's because the anagen phase of these follicles in this area have shortened significantly. So whilst the other ones you might be having four years, um, three years, this one, the anagen phase might be a few months, right? So you really want to make sure that you're catching that early, okay? So then you've got your secondary hair loss types, which is physical damage, injury, and inflammation. So we spoke about braiding your hair too tight, which is gonna cause physical damage. Hormone disorders. So if you've got problems with your thyroids, that's gonna cause problems with hair loss. Um, disease, medicine, dry scalp, and excess sebum. Decreased hair follicular stem cell activity. Now, one of the things that can cause that is diet. So a lot of us are iron deficient. A lot of us are vitamin D deficient, right? Now, your body is programmed to live. Your body don't care how cute you want to look, right? <laughs> you don't care how long you want your hair to be. Your hair is a luxury. As far as your body's concerned, hair is a luxury. It wants your liver to function. It wants your heart to function. It wants your skin to do what it wants to do. So if you don't have the level of vitamins and minerals required in your body, your body will send those to the areas that it deems as essential functions. It will not send those, because the body's intelligent, it's so intelligent. So it will not send them vitamins and minerals to the parts of the body like the hair because it's non-essential. So you can go to your doctors and you can say, look, I feel low on iron, I want you to do an iron test and they'll do the blood test and they'll come back and they'll say, your iron levels are within the normal range. <laughs> and you'll say, what's the normal range? And they'll say between six and 5,000. So anyway, okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but anywhere between that range, they consider to be normal. However, what you need to be asking for is what is my ferritin storage level? So for those of you who wanna write that down, write that down. You're asking them for your ferritin storage levels, okay? Now, ferritin. Now, that's the, the way that the body stores your iron. If your ferritin is low, then the body will not give the iron to their hair. And that's really important for the blood circulation, for oxygen, for carrying nutrients to your hair, your body will not prioritize that part of your body. So you want to make sure that your ferritin levels are optimum conditions. And trichologists say, in order for your, you to have maximized your hair growth with ferritin, you need the levels to be about 80 mg. So you're looking for ferritin storage, okay? 
Another thing that's going to cause decreased hair follicular activity is vitamin D. A lot of us are deficient in vitamin D because of this blasted country, so it's really important. <laughs> We're not getting the sun, and also because our melanin is so amazing. If we're not having the levels of sun exposure that we need, we're going to be vitamin D deficient. So it's really important that you check out your vitamin D as well. And then finally, androgenic alopecia is caused by locally high levels of DHT. I've mentioned this before. Can anyone tell me what DHT is, please? Anybody? Sorry? Yes, yeah, so it's a hormone that is responsible for your androgenic type of hair loss. And it's called dihydrotestosterone. And it's a byproduct of this testosterone, right? So with that type of hair loss, it's increased levels of local DHT, which is causing the follicle to miniaturize over time. And as that follicle begins to miniaturize, your anagen phase of the growth cycle slows down. You're producing um, hair strands that are thinner and weaker until it finally stops, okay? So I've got a little, I've got a little, um, something, yeah, we call it again, diagram. <laughs> I didn't speak like that, a dragon's dead, did I? Right. <laughs> and then that will lead to the alopecia. So I'm showing you how that will disrupt the cycle. So remember earlier I said to you, when women have CCCA or when you're experienced in um, diffused hair loss, you will find that it's disrupting. I'm gonna go over here. So instead of you getting the full um, breadth of the anagen phase, it cuts through and then you go back to the resting phase, the shedding phase, and then the cycle is shortened, right? So if you want to take a picture of that, please do go ahead and then I will move on. Right, oh, sorry, let me go back. I heard someone. Tell me when you're ready. You ready? Everybody ready? All right. One more? All right. I'm going to go in five, four, three, two, one. Right, me, I can move on now. Bear with me one second. I've got two minutes left. No, I've got, okay. Right. <laughs> All right, so I mentioned this earlier. So um, we've mentioned nutrition. See, I'm just ahead of myself. See it there? <laughs> so things that we're stopping in 2021, you can't cure your hair loss with castor oil. You can't solve your hair loss with shea butter. You can't cure your hair loss with rice water. Right? You can't do it. All right? <laughs> or food. We're going to stop putting food in our hair. We're stopping it. We're stopping it. Right? That's done. Because it now work. All right? That's me. <laughs> Looking at all of you putting, putting avocados in your head, right? That's me. So, now, earlier I mentioned that I am so passionate about advancements in ingredient technology and the big boys, the big cosmetics, you know, pharmaceutical companies, they have these ingredients which are not typically being included in products for people of black descent. But because I am so passionate about bringing you guys the best I walk up to them and I negotiate my butt off and I get <laughs> I get the products that I need so I have found an ingredient in my new product which is called flourish which is derived from mung beans and what this ingredient has been proven to do is it's been proven to help elongate the phase of the anagen cycle by interrupting DHT recessors and blocking that process right 
So it also increases the production of growing factors that regulates the stages of the hair follicle cycle. So my ingredient has been scientifically proven and my product is now with the Birmingham University. We're doing in vitro trials on the product to do stem cell, um, check out stem cell activities. And what we're finding is that my product is helping to shorten the telogen phase, elongate the anagen phase, and reduce hair loss, but also encourage the hair to stay in the growth cycle for longer so you can experience hair that is fuller and more dense. Um, and these are, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So on the in vitro trials that we've done, it causes the maturation of the derma papilla. It helps that to mature, to stay strong. It improves cell communication by providing increased hair follicle vitality. So basically what it does is it increases the way that BHMP4, and I can talk to you about this downstairs, I'm gonna try not to get too sciencey, but it increases that communication, which is encouraging the hair cell uh, regeneration and stem cell activity. Um, it increases the growing founders, factors that surround the derma papilla. And the major benefits to Afro hair types is it promotes follicular activity, keeps hair locked in the growing stage, reduces hair fall, increases length of retention, and provides scalp hydration as well. So, um, I have not launched the product yet, <laughs> but I have brought it with me today. So if anybody wants to try, come on downstairs. I'm happy to talk to you about the rest of the um, products. Obviously, science is such an important factor in how I've designed my products to work. So they're all pH balanced, they include the right ingredients. They're really designed to look after the health of your hair. So styling is not what I'm focusing on at the moment. I'm focusing on hair health and making sure that you guys are implementing the right hair care practices so that you can get the best from your hair. Do we have any questions? We're doing a panel discussion now, so you can ask me questions then. <laughs> Thank you. So can we get a big round of applause for Camille? Okay, if everyone can um, give us a moment. We've got a quick message from Nyla, Camise's daughter. Hi everybody, my name is Nyla, as you already know. And I just wanted to say that I'm really proud of my mom. proud of you lovely aren't we family gorgeous young princess Aww. oh don't make me cry mascara is gonna run where are my daughters why aren't they up here <laughs> someone go get my daughters off the stall right now I'm jealous
So family, we're going to have the panel discussion. What a lineup we have. Can we just give a round of applause for their already yeah, sterling you. efforts today and all their presentations? Okay, so if we have questions, we've got 20 minutes for this panel discussion, then obviously you can go and find the individual experts later on to ask them more questions, and we'll try and get through as many people's questions as possible. Um, so who has a question? Can we get some hands? Oh, oh that was quick. That was quick. So my question is, uh, what is the best way of dyeing your hair? Do you have like, because I always hear about like henna, because we're trying to avoid bleach in our family. So yeah, I'd love to know if you recommend any like brands or any techniques. Yeah, please, throw your wisdom my way. Who are you asking? Anyone. Who are you asking? Anyone. It depends on the color you're trying to get, I suppose. What sort of color are you going for? If you want to go natural, then it's more browns as hennas and indigo dyes. So what sort of colour are you looking for? Gold. Gold. There's, there's no natural way to get your hair to be gold. You kind of have to use bleach to remove the pigment. <laughs> what about Midas? Can't we get Midas to touch? Doesn't that work? You can get temporary wax, yeah, Midas colour touch, yeah. Temporary, I say, I say temporary for gold. Any other questions? Hi guys, um, we haven't touched on protein sensitivity yet, and because like my hair is very can be very protein sensitive, it doesn't like coconut oil at all. And there's some oils it doesn't it just doesn't like. Some oils actually dry my hair out, so I had to be really careful about the oils I use. Like my hair loves like black castor oil, very heavy oils. So I just thought we could talk a little bit more about protein sensitivity because I know that I think Sal talked about doing a protein treatment after braids, and for me that's a no. -no. Good question. Who'd like to touch on that? Okay, one, two, one, two. So, um, with people think that you can overload your hair with protein and you can't. Um, the hair will take the protein that it needs and the rest will be washed away. Um, protein works by being hydrolyzed, so when you hydrolyze a protein, you really break it down so it's small enough to fit into the gaps of the hair shaft. Um, and what you'll find is that with a good product, it will the protein will fill those parts of the hair which are damaged and then the rest will be washed away. Um, I think what a lot of people talk about, what they mention when they're, they're talking about protein sensitivity, is that there, there's an imbalance with hydration and moisture and with protein. So you'll find that people are using protein rich products but they're not re really using products which are moisture and hydration rich and, and then that imbalance causes you to think that it's the abundance of protein but with the right product the, the hydrolyzed protein molecules will be rinsed away so I hope that answers your question could someone explain why some people because my niece has the same thing exactly like the sister said some people you put coconut oil on their hair or olive oil and their hair just gets crunchy and crinkly because explain that, that? I think but that's the I think the misconception is that oils don't actually moisturize yeah the oils don't you need to use water to yeah. hydrate your hair um, oils do not moisture, they actually seal. Yeah. So to get your moisture levels up, you need to put water on first and then put oils on secondary and you yeah. have a complete different feeling of hair. And that'll stop the crunch. Yeah. 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 So what is the crunch? So what's happening is... It's turned into Leah's question time. <laughs> so what is the crunch? But do, do other people have this as well? Yeah, because what, what is it that's making the hair feel crunchy? Because that is the myth. Protein overload, your hair feels crunchy. So what is making it crunchy? So the... Hydration goes into the cortex of the hair, which is the innermost part of the hair shaft. Your hair has several different layers. You've got the cortex, you've got the cuticle, um, and then you've got the medulla for some of us. Now, when the hydration, which is your water-based product, when you're not hydrating the cortex of your hair, the cortex becomes dehydrated. What a lot of us are doing is we're putting very thick, moisturizing products which are butters on top of the hair which is the cuticle of the hair so your hair is dry in terms it has no hydration but it's loaded with products so it 
feels like it's got moisture and then you'll start to find that the hair feels crunchy and dry because there's no flexibility within the cortex of the hair which is where all the buns sit so you don't get that fluidity and flexibility of the hair shaft. I don't know if anyone wants oh, to add to so that. Clever, isn't she? All these big words. <laughs> Blimey. Um, Getting a headache. Did I, someone have a question up here? Just, 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 quick, just quickly on that, on that point. Um, one of the things that, that, that we've discovered through te testing and experimenting is, is literally that some of these products that you'll find out there, the sort, sort of five pounds, four, four pound range type, type, type items that, that, that we can purchase, they don't actually add nutrition to your, to your hair. So, so, so it, that's, that's another reason your hair, your hair becomes crunchy because it's, it's almost like a, like, a de like a decoy. You're coating it in, in something that makes it feel soft and slick but it's, it's not actually pen penetrating the hair shaft. So I think it's, imp it's, it's important to put that out there as well, that, 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 that there's more to it than just uh, uh, trying to find some, something that we're piling it on and, and keeping your fingers crossed that, that, that it's actually d doing good stuff for your hair. I think also you get what you pay for. So there are loads of products on the market in the, in the local, you know, in your, super, in your shops that maybe four or five pounds and your hair feels fine for like, half an hour, the next half an hour is dry. It's yeah. loaded with synthetic ingredients. So try yeah. and find products that are actually made up 90% natural ingredients, yeah. not synthetic ingredients. It's a complete game changer. Yeah. I agree with everything and everyone just said. Um, but I, I would like you guys to remember as well that our hair is actually made up of protein yeah. and water and like hydration. So it can't be um, sensitive to itself. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, and on the point of um, product selection that um, both of the amazing panelists just said, you have to think about economy of scale. You have to think about the money, right? Now, if you can buy a product for £1.99 and everybody has made money from that £1.99, the manufacturer, the ingredient supplier, the brand, the person who's selling it, everyone can make money from £1.99. What is in that product? Yeah, a lot of it is byproduct and waste. Mineral oil and petroleum is waste. So they're taking that waste and they're including it in the products for us and it's causing damage. So when you're selecting a product, yes, good products are expensive. They are because they contain the good stuff and we can all attest to that. So think carefully about your product selection as well. Thank you. Okay, next question. So, from a cosmetic formulation point of view, would uh, any cosmetic formulators ever consider using ingredients such as hyaluronic acid or polyglutamic acid for hydration? As you know, hyaluronic acid holds um, uh, one molecule of hyaluronic acid holds 1,000 um, molecules of water, and one molecule of polyglutamic acid holds 5,000 molecules of water. So, this would be really great for hydration. I'm not sure if anyone would have I've considered got it, this. I've got it. <laughs> that got is it. curly by nature. Miss me. I've got hyaluronic acid in my Miss My Hydrating product. And then also I've got um, zinc oxide as well, which is a um, natural um, protector from the sun. Um, so it's a sun blocker. UV protector, that's it. Sorry, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> so it's good for like if you're in hot countries um, or in the summertime. If you don't want your hair to dry out quickly, it, protect, it protects it from heating up. You know, because the sun can actually dry out your hair. Um, but it's great for the winter as well. So anyway, it's a hydrating product. Um, hydronic, the reason why, I'm a cosmetic scientist myself. So I've done formulate, like I do professional formulation. And I thought it was extremely important that we make our own products. And we understand how to make our own products and how to engineer it ourselves. Um, and use superior, um, great products, like you said, hyaluronic acid, which does absorb a thousand times its weight in water. Hence the reason why it's in Miss Me. Is is there something about just accepting that our hair type, and I know Camise, you talk about hair type, um, that we sometimes just need to accept the type of hair that we have, and that we can't do some of the fancy stuff with it. Um, for example, a lot of people will watch YouTube 
and think that they're going to achieve, they've got, let's say, type four or five, and they think they can achieve something that a type one or two can achieve. So there is something about just acknowledging and accepting and being clear about, this is how my hair is, what's the best that I can do with it? I would love, love to, quick, to quickly jump, jump in on that one. Um, this, is, this, this is a misconception that, that we've been sold. Um, our hair, Afro hair, is the most flexible, versatile, wonderful, glamorous, beautiful thing that there is on planet Earth. <laughs> on planet Earth. And there, there may be restrict, restrict, restrictions as to, as to what you can do based on condition and stuff, but in terms of it being, it being able to twist, curl, turn, elevate, electrify, narrow, attract. Our, our hair is the one. It's special, it's divine, it's blessed. And I'll move, I'll move on, but in it, the short answer to it is absolutely not. Try it all, experiment, knowledge is the key. Can, yeah, can I also add to that? Um, yeah, just to back up what um, Obi said, because until I understood about quality natural ingredients, I thought I had a certain hair type and texture. So you'll be thinking that your hair is like this and it can't do that and it's quite, but then when you use the right ingredients, whether it's a ready-made product or um, one that you formulated yourself, you might think to yourself, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had this type of hair. And it's really, really sad because a lot of us only discover our real hair type and texture, you know, well into adulthood mm -hmm. because we spent many, many years from childhood just putting the wrong things on it. So yeah, yeah. don't give up hope on your hair yeah, or think that your hair, you know, doesn't have pretty um, curls because it really does. You can all have those popping curls I'd agree um, with everything you both said. Um, our hair is extremely versatile, and like at my studio, I've got a studio in London where I actually practice doing hair. And every single time I do somebody's hair, and it's just a literally a treatment, um, a, a detox treatment, so that you can see their own natural curls when it's in its most um, um, optimized state and hydrated and healthy state, they're like, I haven't seen my hair like this before. It's their hair. Our hair is amazing. It's just about understanding the um, like superior products that we are in the channel have, yeah? And using the good products and understanding what our, our needs are. Um, in terms of accepting our hair, that's, that is something that we do need to address in the world today. <laughs> and I, I understand that you guys are here because you already recognize um, but our hair is extremely versatile and can do the most naturally. I'd like to touch on the, the concept of good hair. Um, it's a phrase that we've heard many, many times. And I went to an event where a young man said that he had bad hair. And I was sitting in the chair beside him and I had to say something. I think we've been told that as long as you've got mixed heritage or this in you or that in you, and your hair isn't an Afro type, thick Afro type hair, then your hair's not, not your hair's good if it is that way. And I want us to reconsider that we have good hair. We were born with good hair. What we have to do is to learn how to maintain it. Thank you. Also, family, for the Birmingham family, who remembers the event Return to Your Roots? Everyone remember that? Do you remember how good that event was? The sister that just asked the question is Ken Bay Clark, the founder of that event. And she ran that event for seven or eight years straight. So I just wanted to big her up publicly in Birmingham because she's done a lot for highlighting natural hair and wellness in Birmingham for probably the last two decades. Okay, we've got time for five quick questions. So please make your answers quick and speakers make your answers quick as well. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm not from Birmingham or London. I've come from Nottingham. And we, we've not been, yeah, right. My question is, um, a lot of us are here now in England, Europe, and our foreparents didn't come from here. A lot of them, when they came here, they found they had problems with their hair. A lot of their hair fell out, you agree? And what's happening is, we do live in, I, I know personally, I live in a wa hard water area. Yes. And I do have, I do practice technical hairdressing. And what I've done with my system is put a descaler yes. 
and a scale master on my system. Not everybody can go out and buy bottled water to wash their hair. So what you'll find is, all right, no, it's, it is a comment. Right, I'm going to give the question to Ori. Ori, um, because you've devised using different products from different types of companies, I think that is very essential. Um, can I ask you um, how you came about that? Yes. Me? Oh. <laughs> OV, 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 Ori. <laughs> So the question is, how, how did I come about? Okay, so the, sh the, the, really short an the really short answer is years and years and years of research. Really, really spending time to understand what ingredients do, how, how they affect Afro hair, and then looking at, looking at uh, what options are out there for the needs, the needs that we have. Um, that was driven by, by also spend, spending years listening to the issues that, 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 we, that, that come up often. So the issues are always around dry scalp, hair, hair break, hair breakage, hair loss, water damage. And just, just, just trying to find out basically how the, how the two correlate, correlate and then what are the best solutions to address those, those, those issues that come up but it was not a, it was definitely not a two minute operation this is years of study talking to scientists like Clarissa here hours and hours on the phone um, yeah lots lots of work lots of work okay just just quickly uh, hard, hard hard water here really does it's not good for black hair it, it damages it damages black black hair uh, most most in a city urban areas the, the water pH is pH 8 and unless you put a filter on it or you find, find some some alternative source uh, it's that it's damaging your hair every time you yeah. wash your hair basically I just want to say something though I've got to keep it real um, I've gone to quite a few of these events I know from first hand the sort of unnecessary hair damage we get from using brands like Cantu so I don't understand why we're all here talking about black business and black hair, but that is not a black owned business. Their products do excessive amounts of damage to hundreds of my customers' hair. Whenever I do a post on Cantu, I have to be real, I get hundreds of comments saying it's damaged my hair, it's given me hair loss, so why are we supporting that brand? That brand does nothing for the black community at all, has no concern for our hair, it's just milking us as a cash cow, so let's keep it real. Why is Cantu at this event? Okay, so we're going to keep going with the other questions now. We are going to keep going with the other questions now. It's a valid question. It's a valid question, but we're going to keep going. All right, thank you, family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we've got another question from the audience. Over here, we've got a question from the audience. Okay, greetings, everyone. Greetings to the panel. Apologies if I've missed some of your responses to this. Um, but I'd like to know if you could just expand on your understanding and your knowledge of the use of rice water, the advantages, the disadvantages. As I know, sorry, I might have missed some of your responses. I've just come in and said, can I find out a little bit more? Can you expand on your responses on that? I just wrote an article for Healthline uh, on rice water, and rice water is part of the trend we see on YouTube. Um, it's beneficial and it's not beneficial in the same breath. It can lead, to, in my opinion, to over dryness of the hair, especially if you have tight, full hair, because rice water contains a lot of protein. But if you're not balancing it out with moisture, you can experience breakage and damage. So it depends how you want to use it. Um, three ways you can use it. You can use it as a pre poo treatment, but then follow up with deep condition treatment afterwards. Um, I prefer black rice water over white rice water. It's more nutritional. And I think it's just take it with a pinch of salt. Don't do everything you see on YouTube. Everything is not going to give you the results you're thinking. Try to understand your, your own hair conditions, where your hair is now, and tailor your conditions and routine towards that. Can I say, um, in relation to um, like fermented um, rice water, there is an ingredient that is um, scientifically proven, which is in, again, the Miss To Me product that I've got. But... <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts. <laughs> but it's been scientifically um, formulated 
it's not like if you're if you if you've got time to be using old rice water in your hair, like seriously, um, because uh, th another thing is it it depends on how you use it. I wouldn't do things like that because it's not necessarily it's just you know anecdotal. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, exactly. Right. So if you do want something that is effective. Um, like with good bacteria, that's good for your microbiome, which is, you know, the bacteria that lives, the healthy, good bacteria that lives in your scalp or your skin, um, and you want it to be balanced. The Mr. Me product is a hydrating product that is exceptionally really good for your scalp. Um, I've sold out of the um, large ones, but I have got a few ones downstairs. Just, just, just saying. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to ask a question, really, it's kind of to Nyla. Um, what it is, um, you mentioned about the DHT, I'm here. Um, I just wanted to find out, obviously, for women that are going into menopause, obviously a DHT will be rising. What can you suggest in terms of natural, trying to reverse that process or juice the amount of testosterone that's being produced in the body to help the hair grow? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, obviously, um, in terms of answering, Answering that, obviously you know that as you age, the estrogen in your body starts to decline, testosterone starts to increase, and that's where you experience the hair loss on the head, but you experience more hair in other places. <laughs> so in terms of like diet, there's a lot of things that you can start to incorporate in your diet. There's a lot of things that you should look at eliminating from your diet that's going to help with your estrogen. So soy, for example, is one of the things that you want to eliminate from your diet, okay? Um, yeah, yeah, you wanna have a lot of foods that are really rich, a lot of vegetables, a lot of things that are rich in iron, a lot of that kind of stuff that's gonna really help to boost your hormones, check out your thyroids, a lot of things that should be done. But ultimately, it's about having a balanced and healthy diet. Um, a lot of people have spoken about using contraception, which are rich in estrogen, but I would not recommend that at all, right? So you don't want anything synthetic. So definitely do your research and find out what are the raw materials and raw ingredients that you should include in your diet. Um, in terms of topical applications, as I've said, we have a DHT blocker that blocks DHT receptors on the head. So it's gonna increase the um, anagen phase and it's gonna reduce the harmful effects of testosterone. Um, I just wanted to, sorry. Uh, sorry, sis, we're going to have to go, sis, we're going to take one more question from the audience and then I'm going to ask everyone to give their closing statements because we're going to have to go to a break now. So we've got one more question. Sorry, okay, family, what I'm also going to ask is, again, please do go to the experts during the break and ask them any questions that you didn't get to answer right now. We're going to take uh, one more question. Sorry, sir, Leah, I yeah. just wanted, I thought it's important for the starch question because I don't think it was answering the starch or rice water question. I don't think it was... Um, yeah, properly, in the sense that rice water, you know what rice water is because you cook it, right? Um, it's starch. You shouldn't be putting star starch. Is, um, it's like too heavy to be putting on your hair. It's only going to feel nice, like what we were saying earlier about the products on your It's not going to necessarily be penetrating your scalp or your hair. It's just going to feel nice. So it might feel nice, but it's not doing anything. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, Melanin Rich family. I'm loving, I'm inspired, I'm just overwhelmed with all the joy here. But I need some clarification. When we buy all these amazing hair products, some people still say that you shouldn't overwash your hair because you're just washing out the product. So can you just clarify that for me, please? I think it's the same thing as putting something on your skin to moisturize it. I think. Um when you have a shower each morning, you're washing away that hydration. Your skin takes what it needs when it needs it. So I, I, don't, I don't know if that really makes much sense to me. But I think if, you're, if your hair is dry or damaged and you need to use a protein mask, you will take the protein it needs and you wash your hair the next time. You still get some protein loss, but you keep on replacing it as and when needed. So I think it comes with a bit of um, research within common sense. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just add that when it comes to washing your hair, really, you, you know, it gets dirty, the scalp gets dirty, but it's really essential to wash it regularly. Some people do weekly, others do two weekly, but really it's about maintaining a really healthy environment for your hair to grow. So I wouldn't worry about not washing your hair for weeks because you want to preserve all the products. You're probably going to have a, um, a negative effect if you were to do that. Yeah. You need to um, also think about, again, how products builds up in layers on the shaft of your hair. And when I spoke earlier about that, 
transition molecules entering into the cortex, if you've got a lot of buildup and a lot of product on your hair, it's going to stop the hydration from entering into the cortex of your hair. So you really do need to be washing excess buildup away. Um, another thing to take into consideration is not one size fits all, it's about your lifestyle. Some of us go swimming, some of us don't. If you're entering into chlorine water often, you'll need to wash your hair. If you live in a, a city where there's a lot of pollution, you'll need to wash your hair. So it's about finding the balance that works for you. One thing I will say is it's really important to keep the scalp clean and keep that environment really healthy. So if you find that you've got a lot of build upon the scalp and on, on the hair, you should definitely be washing your hair and washing that away. Thank you. Can we get a big round of applause for our panel of experts? here at the Black, Hidden Science of Black Hair. So I'm just going to ask everyone to give their last comments um, before we wrap up and go to break. I'll say, um, if you want great hair, it starts with an appointment. It doesn't happen by chance. Number one. Number two, keep it super simple. Number three, keep your scalp clean and then your ends moisturised, your hair moisturised and sealed. Okay, great. My, my, my quick rundown is first and foremost, support black, biz, black businesses. We have got some great brands right here in front, in front of you to support. Support black owned businesses whenever you can. Next, I would, I would say learn. Like, I, I know homework is not sexy, but, but the more you, you know, the more you grow, as, 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 as they say. So learn. And lastly, um, take advantage of the opportunities that, that are available. The Afro hair and beauty space is the gold mine of the future. Forget cryptocurrency, property, blah, blah, blah. Afro hair is where it's at. We're gonna make hair care millionaires and billionaires in the next 10 years. That's my word. Um, I would like to say that, as we know, um, Applied knowledge is power, so in, empower yourself. A lot of knowledge has been shared today. I hope you've been taking notes. Apply it. One of the best things you can do for yourself and the next generation is to give them the knowledge that you didn't have. So a lot of the mistakes that we made, a lot of the things that we were doing, our children and grandchildren should not be doing them. You know, you'll see, you've done the basic tutorials of how to mix your own research, because that's how a lot of us started. Curiosity, research, we can all do it. Yeah, let's get up the same way we can put effort into other things, get the knowledge about the things that are really going to make a difference for the generations to come. I would just say, I want to second all of what you just said. It's brilliant. I think it really starts from in the home. Don't expect somebody on YouTube to teach you how to care for your hair completely. Again, do your own research, as Obi said as well. Um, but if you have a child at home, I say, um, in order for us to really stop the cycle of, of bad hair days and hair loss in the black community, it starts from when the children are knee high. So start to give them simple lessons in terms of, I'm washing your hair today to cleanse your scalp. We're gonna follow with a deep conditioner treatment. Your hair will shrink. It's different to your friends at school, but it's still beautiful hair. Positive affirmations. Uh, we had an event for children a couple of years ago, and we had so many kids in there who hated their hair. By the time they left, they sat for our workshops, they loved their hair because they understood the nature of their hair. So try and be real with your children. And also teach yourselves and then teach them as well. Education is power. So I just wanted, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, um, I spoke earlier about the essential, uh, sorry, the carrier oils that I brought back from West Africa, Ghana specifically. And the reason why I actually went to Ghana, because I could have made those contacts, I could have found them online, I could have done it all. But those of you that know me know that whatever I bring into our community, I go to the country. I find what it is. I find the people. I understand the spirit that is put into the oils that we're putting on our body. I understand the spirit of the people that came before us so that I can come back and explain and share that spirit with you. So my message is teach yourself and your children. You are the healers in your home. Teach them about the baobab. Teach them about the papaya. Teach them about the moringa, the hibiscus, the black seed, the castor oil. All of these things that our forefathers used and lived well into their hundreds. That is what our legacy needs to be. And that is what we need to teach our young people, Ashe. I 
I would like us to consider the food we're eating. What are we eating? How are we feeding our hair? And I'd like us, I mentioned it earlier, to all think, what have I fed my hair today? So I'd like us to go away with that in mind. Hair is holistic. We can put the most amazing products on our hair, but what are we doing internally? I'd also like to um, also challenge the fact that it's also about our mindset. We do have beautiful hair. We do have good hair. And I don't use that term loosely. We have good hair. So now we have to embrace it. And I know for many of us, it's a transition. We've gone through years, centuries of, of self-hating. But as we continue to embrace our beauty, our natural beauty, we will become, we'll be able to pass that on to the generations that follow. And we shouldn't look on anybody else who's struggling or who's still transitioning. We just need to just keep supporting and encouraging each other. I'd also like to ask the men as well to support us black women because so often the men, they like all the other styles of hair. So that's just something that I'd just like to add. now because she's just done the dance um, <laughs> but what I would say is that hair our hair care is multifaceted and um, there are a lot of layers and a lot of components in order to get the best out of our hair and to help it flourish so I think everyone's echoed very valiant points one is making sure that you're using the right products you're selecting the right ingredients you're supporting black owned brands where possible um, you're taking into consideration your diet. The sister over there mentioned a really important point as it relates to the water and the harshness of the water and how that's damaging our skin and our hair. Um, I think I want to take some time to talk about the language that we use to describe our hair. Um, many of you have said that we're using terms like good and bad, but there are um, also a lot of micro expressions and terms that we use to, to describe our hair, which is not conducive to positive thoughts about ourselves, and our children pick up on those terms. So instead of saying I have dry hair, say I have thirsty hair, what's the difference? When you say you have dry hair, you accept that it's dry. When you say you have thirsty hair, you accept that you need to hydrate it all of the time, right? Um, another thing that we should stop doing is saying you have, you know, your hair tough, your hair strong. Say no, actually, your hair requires patience, your hair requires love, your hair requires dedication. And I think once we start to incorporate that type of language within our home, we will start to intrinsically ensure that our children love their hair. So that's what I wanted to add. So thank you to Clarissa McDonald from Curly by Nature, Ovi King from The Hair Revolution, Sherilyn Dos Santos from Pure Goodness. We've got the lovely Sal Baxter from Root, I didn't forget. Sal Baxter from Root to Tip, Obi, Abby Osho from Soul Medicine, Natasha Briscoe from Horizon Shine Cosmetics. On a stop clap, why on a stop clapping? Keep the clapping now. <laughs> and then we've got the Dragon's Den winner, Cam Davies. And sis, I wanna, I wanna be the first to publicly, I wanna be the first, sis, to, with, in front of all these witnesses, to say, I beg you 50 pound. <laughs> and you have witnesses, and don't you start asking as well, me ask first. Start me out later, yeah? All right, thank you very much, big round of applause. So we're gonna be going.